Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Go ahead and hit the like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video. This video is going to be about Lisa Van Allen. So, Lisa Van Allen, let's recap. Let's recap. Keep negating from the fact that Lisa Van Allen is the girl on the tape. And as far as the person in the threesome, that person is Adelina Prado. So let's quickly review that information and where I came up with that. This is an old article back in the time. Way before people start passing around that the girl on the sex tape was Rashonda Lanfair. Before that, this article was out, and this is what it said. The Minnesota woman, Lena Prado, was not on, has not been mentioned in court before, but Van Allen said she had known her since 1999. Van Allen denied having a sexual relationship with Prado. Van Allen did admit to stealing Kelly's $20,000 Rolex from his hotel room. Asked why she had never admitted stealing the watch until today, she said, that's not what R. Kelly's on trial for. So, again, information like this has been out. Some strange reason somebody magically started putting out Rashonda is the victim and bloggers ran with it. But find me a fucking article that has her name in it. You won't. They will identify her as the niece of somebody, but they never put her name out there. Here is another article from that time. A R. Kelly and his legal team gear up to combat a new slate of sex tape footage. Details of what appears on the tapes are emerging, which triggered an alleged past victim to speak out. Lisa Van Allen, who allegedly appeared on the infamous first tape, says that the acts depict on the new tape sound similar to her ordeal. So, there is the implication of her being on the first infamous first tape. What else are they referring to? Another report from none other than TMZ. Lisa Van Allen was on TMZ Live Wednesday and she told us the descriptions of the new tapes are basically par for the course. Lisa was one of the two young women on the original R. Kelly sex tape for which he went on trial but was ultimately acquitted in 2008. She was 17 at the time of the tape. In court during the 2008 trial, Van Allen testified that she took the tape while she was still involved with Kelly because she was ashamed of it. She said the tape was of her, Kelly, and the underage girl at the center of the trial having group sex. She said Kelly asked her to try threesomes because he wanted her wanted their sex life to be adventurous. Hmm. So let's talk about the other girl in the sex tape because we already openly hear Lisa Van Allen is one girl and they're negating from there were two girls in the tape altogether. They just want you to keep saying Rashonda Lanfair is the girl in the tape. But let's talk about the girl in the tape. The other girl, I say. So another article I came across linking Lisa Van Allen to this Atlanta Prado person also detailed how the tape was passed in between Chuck and Keith or two people I mentioned in another video and Damon Pryor Lisa Van Allen's baby daddy who testified that he was in the video so as I pointed out in the 
video I did with the R. Kelly sex tape, you can obviously see there's multiple men in that video. So, again, it's a lot of discrepancies going on with this story. So, my thing is, we know for a fact Lisa Van Allen was in that tape. The question is, was the other person Adlena Prado, which is what I believe. This is someone many people have been referring to as Beverly. And it was always rumored Lisa Van Allen and this Beverly person were always seen together. They were the best of friends. So it would make sense if two best friends have a threesome with her baby daddy. So let's go to this photo, which I looked up her background and what's odd to me is it's giving me her age of 44. So that would clearly mean she was not 17 in 1998. And it's funny that on Twitter, these so-called activists are retweeting this saying y'all really think this is an id who told you stupid ass people this was an id it's obviously a collage when i post things on my social media accounts these are reference points for me and if anybody takes my reference points and and does something else with it that's on them but i fully intend to explain what i was doing with this picture when i made the fucking video for it so this was not meant to be an ID. Clearly, anybody know what a damn ID looked like? It was a reference point. A, she already has an arrest record, which she has had expunged. And B, what's up with her age? There seems to be a great discrepancy. People keep saying she graduated out of high school. Well, is it not possible that when she graduated, she was a little bit older? I know plenty 20, 21 year olds that graduated a little bit slow. Yeah, who wants to admit that? Hmm. All I know is this is the age that was given to me when I pull up her information. And as far as those saying it's not correct, let me go back and bust your bubble too. When I searched Lisa Van Allen in the age range she's supposed to be in, I pull up nothing. She's originally from Minnesota. So then people were like, no, she's originally from Chicago. Okay, well, let me humor you people. And let me put this age again. And what do I see? Zero results. All right, so let's go back. To Lisa Van Allen, Minnesota. Let's change the age category, 40 to 45. And what do I know? It pops up. So now let's go into people asking me, oh, why would Lisa Van Allen do this? Why would she do this? Let's talk about who Lisa Van Allen was before surviving R. Kelly because she has had a hard knock life and maybe she has been sexually abused or abused in general. But my thing is this, why not create a platform built around survivors in that form instead of joining on to defaming someone's character because it's going to be profitable in your eyes. And let me just show you how it would be profitable for her. Cause let me show you where it started with her. Before surviving R. Kelly, Lisa Van Allen was broke. Okay? Motive. Two thousand thirteen, what was Lisa Van Allen doing? Promoting stripper parties. That's what Lisa Van Allen was doing. It wasn't trying to advocate for abused women. She was out partying, 
from 2013 all the way up until she got on this new kick. But it's funny. Two thousand fourteen, she needs a huge tax refund. Two thousand fifteen, she's selling a transmission. Selling a transmission, like she out here trying to do a little hustle. Clearly, two thousand eighteen, she was still having baby daddy issues. She posts, "Am I the only one with baby daddies that act that are worse than females?" Since when do baby daddies link up? Plural, multiple baby daddies. We already slick covered that in another video I did, but I'll go back over that. She talking about some child support. For those that didn't catch that last video, Lisa Van Allen has three baby daddies. Yep. And one of them swears he's a pimp. But I don't see her speaking out on him. Damon Pryor, one of her baby daddies, the one in the top right corner, is the same one who admitted he is on the sex tape. He is the one that was on the sex tape from the 2008 trial. Meanwhile, her other baby daddy on here living the pimp lifestyle. But we have nothing to say about them. Then you got Clary on here calling out Lisa Van Allen saying she doesn't have immunity so she should stop lying. What is she lying about? Oh, the extortion plot, right? Because let's go back to what Sparkle said. You know what? Pause. I'm going to hold that for a video I do on Sparkle. Let me just hold that. Let's pick up to where Lisa Van Allen was right around the time Le the surviving R. Kelly aired. She's promoting this like she's about to be the next star. Even has posts with her in the I Wish video braiding his hair. And people are so quick to jump on her story about her being a victim at this time. But let's see what she had to say. Here she is responding to somebody's comments and she says she didn't know about Drea just like the rest of the world didn't know after she moved to Chicago with Rob. A runner slipped and said it and was fired for it. He said she was cool and knew about his lifestyle. I even called would call the mansion in Olympia Fields on Sunday if I needed him. Rob slept with me for three years every day because we didn't sleep at night, except Sunday. She may have had the home, but like she said, she was in prison while I was doing videos, traveling, shopping. He was making hits about me, attending music awards, putting, pulling me on stage on tour after singing Half on a Baby, getting my hair. How could I hate someone who hasn't done anything to me? I don't even hate Rob, and he used all of us, to be honest. So Drea can speak about they old-ass relationship, but I can't. Doesn't the world deserve the facts? I was the first one to come out, and I'm not charging for my story. It's free. There's the lies. Clearly, she is charging for her story clear as day on her page while she's promoting this book after she feels like Lifetime has made her such a big star. She says if you claim we family or friends, even if you claim we cool and you ain't showing support by purchasing my book 
and posting it's shame on you actions speak louder than words god will show you the real it stay sold out we good over here just wanted to get that off my chest god bless you all so this is what lisa van allen had going on while surviving r kelly was causing damage trying to sell her book why would Lisa Van Allen do this? Why? Is it not becoming clear to you? Right after, she says, just finished watching part two of Surviving R. Kelly, she comes up with this goddamn fundraiser. She didn't raise no money, but she tried it. Why would Lisa Van Allen do this? Because she's after a bag. They like articles like this because if you go through any of their first articles, their first interviews, they were talking more so about R. Kelly's sex life. More you could obviously tell the interviewers were not interested in their stories. They're just trying to get juicy gossip. And these dum-dums fell into it. So this is why you have a hard time convincing somebody like me that these people are actual victims. And why I continue to call them accusers. Because that's all they're doing is accusing. Because at the time, they seem to be having a great time. You just seen it out of her own inbox. Her own typing. She says she was out shopping and videos getting pulled on stage like she was living the life now she's saying she was so abused i'm finding it hard to believe she likes to be the star witness in r kelly's trial but she failed to mention she was also the least credible witness in r kelly's trial that's why her whole testimony was thrown the fuck out Look at her. Don't mind me. I'm just working. Working. She's working. Right. R. Kelly's former lover focuses on life after trial. I was crazy about this man and I believed all the lies. So because you believed all the lies or you believed that he was single and you were going to be the next Miss Kelly, he abused you? Is that what's going on? That's what it seems to me. At Lena Prado, as far as her, if she was the girl in the sex tape, just like if she is the Minnesota accuser, by her records, she is 39. That would mean in 2001, she was not 17. And you can clearly see that this is not an ID like some dumb dumb will try to put on social media trying to make us look like we're stupid. I put this together as a reference so that I could pull it together. I found Atlena on Explore Talent. You can go look her up. She's trying to be a model actress. And it's also odd how all these females, these accusers have IMDB pages. They're all trying to be models and actresses. But just like all the rest of them, they all have a shady past. Retail theft. Like, all of these people are shady. They'll sit here and spin the narrative they weren't into threesomes, but they are into this type of behavior. Before surviving R. Kelly, Lisa Van Allen was evicted four times in three years between 2009 and 2011. This lady was evicted four times. So why would she say all this stuff about R. Kelly? Just, just use your common sense. And look who's following her. Her good old friend. A Cuban bird, though. A.K.A. Adeline Prado. The twins 
put this photo up, which Lisa Van Allen tried to delete, like like all of them. Once they came out with their allegations, they went to their social media and tried to delete all the stuff that would incriminate them. But she was so abused, she couldn't do this, she couldn't do that. Clearly, she's saying her family's being flown out. She's sitting there with an R. Kelly shirt on, smiling ear to ear. Somebody asked me to put up my cash app, so just slide that on in there. I'll put it at the end as well. The sex tape that they are saying is R. Kelly and Rashonda. But R. Kelly was not set up like that. And that picture, to me, looks more like Lisa Van Allen, who openly said it was she was in the sex tape. What y'all trying to confuse is the other person in the sex tape with her, which was her best friend. There she is, smiling for the cameras, all she really wants. There is the other collage I put together from the images I found on the internet with the Google search. And you can visibly see there are multiple men, there are multiple women. And you see the hairstyle on Lisa Van Allen. As far as people talking about the the sex tapes had time stamps on them, that's a lie. Because the articles that I came across clearly said that was the biggest issue with those sex tapes. They cannot identify the people in them. Yet people want to so readily believe the narrative they're being told clear as day they cannot pinpoint her age because they're not exactly sure when any of the videos were made defense attorneys accused van allen of trying to extort three hundred thousand dollars from kelly in exchange for her silence which she did however testified that she stole a twenty thousand dollar diamond rolex While Lisa Van Allen was out here campaigning, she failed to realize how stupid these people were making her look by sitting there disrespecting Aaliyah, talking about R. Kelly told her he had a threesome with Aaliyah and her mom. But in this article I found, she clear as day says, in response to a question about Aaliyah, briefly, I don't really know if I should discuss him and Aaliyah's situation. Basically, all he told me about that was that he that they did get married and that they went to Vegas for the marriage. He didn't say how old she was. Now, she just said the only thing he told her was that they did get married and they went to Vegas. But the problem with that story is, according to Demetrius, they got married in Cook County. So, make this shit make sense for me. Some ain't adding up. Now, I'm already getting bashed on Twitter because people keep talking about this fake-ass marriage certificate, which don't have no notary on there, which don't have no signatures of the parties involved. But y'all keep coming at me about this bullshit-ass marriage certificate and this fool over here talking about they was married in vegas but this dude over here said they was married in a hotel in chicago so when y'all figure out which is the truth get back at me i'll be waiting <laughs> then you got miss jada pinkett on the red table talk, crying with her also sad, poor baby. 
But the problem is, she didn't do her research. Because if she had done her research, she would have known this wasn't going to fly. Number one, let's talk about it. Shortly after having these clowns on her platform, she decides to come out and tell the whole wide world she used to be a porn addict. And who was her favorite star? None other than Mr. Marcus. And if you don't know who Mr. Marcus is, because I didn't know I had to go search myself, Mr. Marcus is the porn star who was convicted for passing syphilis to all his co-workers. Because he didn't want to tell nobody he had, he had it. So he faked his test, went on to work, and passed his disease on to his people. And this lady wants to come out right after having this sexual assault victim on her platform and tell this was her favorite porn star. Why didn't she dig into what happened with his case? That just sounds a little bit odd to me and just gave me a, a whole lot of red flags for her to do so. Maybe it's just me. And then on top of that, Lisa Van Allen brings whole, her little daughter, can't say little daughter because she's far from little, but brings her daughter on the Red Table Talk. But let me show you the fact that her daughter is a Twitter escort, is a Snapchat thought. She be out here busting it wide open for the ground. And then uh, Lisa Van Allen gonna have audacity to say, sad how these mothers won't speak up for these young girls. Meanwhile, your child is all over the damn internet soliciting men to sex for money. Sounds like, like mother, like daughter. So let me go back to this video because I got thrown off a while ago. But just tell me if you see a resemblance because y'all keep trying to figure out talking about these girls are not all connected. That's, that's a lie. All right. So this was a picture from Lisa Van Allen saying that her cousins were flown out. Right. And let's look at these girls. Let's look at them. All right. Let's look at this girl over here. I wish I had done a side by side, but I just thought about it just then. This girl looks strangely close to this girl. Just correct me if I'm wrong, but they look awfully alike. And according to Miss Adelina Prado, this is her relative as well. So, y'all keep acting like these people don't know each other they all know each other birds of a feather flock together all of them out here doing the same thing scamming they all started out bankrupt for the most part and they all figured out a way to build on a platform and try to solicit money but it doesn't change the fact that they're getting caught up in lie after lie, and they're all seeking fame. That is it. Sadly, their fame seeking was the propaganda needed to push in these indictments. So it bothers me that people be acting so slow when they see certain posts that I make about certain individuals from the docu-series and they say something stupid like, well, they're not in the indictment. I don't, everything I post isn't about the indictment. Some of the things I post may be random and come along the way and things that led up to the indictment and so on and so forth. So with that being said, when I do these things, I do intend to break it down in a video. But as you can understand, if I'm the only person doing this for me, 
it can get a little bit overwhelming. So sometimes I just have to do things the way I'm doing it so that I can come back and put it all together. Just to take us back because everybody wants to keep demon R. Kelly a pedophile from Lisa Van Allen's own words because, of course, Lifetime is not going to air anything positive. Essence.com asked her if she ever suspected the girl was younger than 16 because she's telling this lie. The girl is six, under 16. So what does Lisa Van Allen say? Not at the time. She acted like she was my age and she was developed more than me. I just didn't know. And then she wants to keep backtracking from the lifestyle in which they were partaking in, which was the threesomes, orgies, whatever you want to call it, which she was down with. So she want to say, oh, we only did it a couple times, a couple times. Well, if the only couple times you want to admit to now is with the person you're saying was Rashonda, where did Atlena Prado come into play? Because... Clearly, she has been tied into this story in multiple sources, and that is not going to go away. When asked if you think he likes teenage younger girls, we never had a conversation about him preferring teenage girls, she said. She assumed it was just her. And the situation supposedly with the singer had passed, referring to Aaliyah. So if it hadn't been for Aaliyah, she would think she was the only underage girl he has dated. So why is if it, why now all of a sudden she playing dumb, acting like he just has a preference for younger girls? She aborted a child because he likes older girls, I mean younger girls. But at the same time, she brought her younger child around this man when her baby daddy kicked her out. Make that make sense. Mama. They want to paint him as being controlling. Well, they negated the fact that he took care of all of the things that they needed. So that's why they didn't want to leave. They had every option to leave, but they chose not to. Why? In the words of Van Allen herself, he took care of everything. I did whatever he was doing. The day would start in the evening. We'd get a bite to eat. He'd record a little. Then we'd go to Hoops. Then we'd go to McDonald's. He'd record through the whole night, and then we'd sleep all morning. So again, this man is very... Routine does the same things. So people make set made such a big deal about him going out going to McDonald's when he got out of jail. Well clearly he likes McDonald's. As far as her not knowing about Drea, we've crossed paths, but I I was never introduced to her. I don't think she knew who I was to him, but she definitely knew that I was around a lot. I don't know much about how their relationship works. He was around me a lot, so they would have had separate lives. So, in this article with Essence, she's backtracking from her own words in which she just claimed in a couple tweets ago she said that um she didn't know drea just like none of the world knew drea so now she's saying they've crossed paths and she knew about her but she wasn't introduced to her see that's just the thing about it when they started with this surviving r kelly bullshit they were just riding the wave and these interviewers were just doing their jobs trying to get gossip and they fell along with it. So the problem with that is now you can't twist none of the stuff you said already 
to now make yourself appear to be a victim because people are calling you out because you are the prime reason why the feds and all these people started soliciting these so-called victims. Now, if anybody else asks me why am I talking about these people from Surviving R. Kelly, that is the reason. Because based on the facts, go look it up. They told you out their own mouth. They pushed for this indictment based off of Surviving R. Kelly. Therefore, I have a problem with the bullshit that was displayed on Surviving R. Kelly. So this is what I'm breaking down. Now, my next video is going to be on faith. And this is going to get interesting. Stay tuned. Have a great day. Oh, before I go, let me share my cash app again for those that are interested. All right, so this is my cash app again. Again, for those interested, this is the way you can support my channel. I don't really know any other ways. God bless you and have a great day, as I said.